we've talked about the nervous system and endocrine system, comparing them. We've talked about cell signaling. Let's actually talk about um, endocrine glands and what those glands those are. So endocrine glands are in contrast to exocrine glands. This should be obvious now from the last video, but endocrine gland is a bunch of cells that secrete stuff into the bloodstream. This is a nice visual of that process of these cells that when they produce their chemical messenger, because this bloodstream is right here, it's gonna go off into the bloodstream. And that's in contrast to an exocrine gland, which is exo means linked to the outside, right? So sweat glands, uh, the pancreas actually has some, there's some in your digestive tract that are going to produce stuff in these cells, put it into this little hole or duct here, right? And then it's gonna go out onto the, bo the body surface or internal surface of the body that's considered the outside, like the digestive tract is considered outside of the body, right? But sweat is a great example. It's not the only example of exocrine gland, great example. Endo means inside, it's going inside the body, staying inside the body, traveling throughout the blood. So what are the endocrine glands? First of all, there's a lot of endocrine glands um, or gl uh, organs that have endocrine function. So we're gonna talk about the main endocrine glands that are primarily endocrine. There's also some that have endocrine function. For example, the skin produces hormones that travel in the bloodstream. So does your digestive system, your um, kidneys, a lot of things. Here is a picture of the main hormone producing glands that their primary job is to produce hormones or a very significant job. So the first one um, here, this is right. Yeah, that's it. Actually, no, this one, I almost messed it up. This back here, you guys recognize that? That's the pineal gland. And this is just a horm um, an endocrine gland, it produces melatonin. So melatonin um, is involved in circadian rhythms, helps you be sleepy, and that's the job of the pineal gland. Here is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is actually nervous tissue, but it produces neurohormones. So it's not just the endocrine gland, but it's a very important part of the endocrine system. And it does produce neurohormones that travel throughout the bloodstream. It's gonna be oxytocin and vasopressin. The pituitary gland is just below the hypothalamus. It is composed of both nervous tissue and endocrine tissue. Um, so we'll look a lot more at that. It's one of my favorite organs. It's not just endocrine, but like it's so important, the endocrine system. Um, but it's not just endocrine tissue. So I really should take that away. Okay, we've got the thyroid gland down here that produces thyroid hormone and calcitonin. We'll come back to those. Calcitonin should sound familiar in relation to um, blood calcium levels. Speaking of blood calcium levels, here is the parathyroid gland, which produces parathyroid hormone to regulate blood calcium levels. I'll come back to that briefly. We've got the thymus that is not just endocrine, it's also a immune um, lymphatic organ. So I'm not gonna put a star there. Um, we actually won't talk about it much, but it is it does have important endocrine function. And then we've got the adrenal glands. They are not just endocrine. They also have um, the adrenal medulla and the adrenal cortex are functional a little bit differently, but actually they produce, it produces all hormones. I'm not gonna quiz you on which things are just endocrine glands and which are not, because who knows? It depends on what cells are there, right? Are there any other cells there? Well, of course there are. There's lots of tissue types in every organ. They're surrounded by fibers. They have neural innerv innervation. Yeah, we'll get more into the adrenal gland. It's pretty cool. 
It's got modified ganglion cells. That's the only reason I resist in calling it just an endocrine gland. It does produce all kinds of hormones though. Okay, this is the pancreas, produces um, glucagon and insulin. It's not just endocrine, it also is an exocrine gland that produces digestive enzymes to help with digestion. So we will look at it both as part of the endocrine system and then we'll come back to it with the digestive system as well. Lastly, we've got our gonads. So I'm gonna actually label both of these. So that is ovaries in the female and testes, one testis testes in the male um, that produce sex steroids. So these are pretty much also um, endocrine or organs that we will come back to a little bit in the endocrine system as well as then we get to reproduction. So again, there's also a wide variety of other organs outside of these glands that produce hormones. So one or more. So we'll see some of these when we get the very last unit of this semester, we'll get to the kidneys, they produce hormones. Um, before that, we'll get to the heart produces hormones. Um, I said already the um, skin, the digestive system, so stomach, small intestine, uh, fat cells do skeletal muscle, your uterus, the bone marrow, blood vessels, etc. So again, the definition of hormone is, does it produce something that goes into the bloodstream? We're not going to talk about all these things. So focus of the endocrine system will be um, most of these. And then we'll see some of these as we get to these organ systems. We'll also see how like the heart is affected by the adrenal gland hormones. So there's a lot of integration. So what we've done here is list and identify the major endocrine organs. And these are the ones that I have listed for you.